I'm here today with Lucy Beresford, who is a psychotherapist and a broadcaster, and you're really good on all aspects of appearance, I always find, as well as relationships, which I know is your main you. area. So I thought we could just talk maybe a bit about how people feel about treatments and how older women, I suppose I'm talking about the 40 plus mm. women, find it such a conflicting area um, because one thing well, you came along to that last treatments clinic event I did which was the speed date the doctors thing yes and where I work mostly in the aesthetics bubble people are always saying the stigma around treatments has completely gone mm -hmm. but then even with an event like that which is pulling in a bunch of people who are already curious about these things I find there were lots of people coming along who said this is a very private and secret mission and no one can know, or they say, I didn't know it was okay to come and talk yeah. about these things. You think, of course it is, and yet there's that great reluctance. Well, I think there are two things happening. I think there are the group of people who almost don't believe that they deserve treating themselves, yes. who don't see self-care as something that is a priority. And in particular, we see that a lot with people who've perhaps had to take care of other people a lot, whether that's children, whether that's older parents, or maybe they take that role in their workspace. But when it comes to themselves, somehow they aren't good enough. Gosh. And I see that a lot in my work, and I heard it at that event. I heard, you know, there were so many okay. amazing conversations yeah. that often we have, were having, you know, the beautiful food that you provided, we were all sort of chatting around that, people mm -hmm. were queuing to speak to the doctors. And we were chatting and some people, as you say, were sort of, no one knows I'm here. Mm. You know, I haven't told my partner, yeah. I haven't told my girlfriend what mm. I'm doing. So I think there's that dimension to it. And that, of course, is extremely unfortunate because I'm here to bang the drum for people looking after themselves yes. and, and placing yes. self-care yeah. as a priority. Oh, and, to, 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 sorry to interrupt you, but can, can, can we see this as self-care treatment? Well, I mean, yes, because, because I, in a way, there's a whole spectrum, you know, what, when does putting moisturiser on yourself change to being some kind of tweakment. It's, it's sure. they're all on a spectrum. Yes. And it's probably a personal thing as to whether you think going to, you know, face gym, you know, I'm a huge, yes, after you yes, told me about yeah, face gym, yeah. I, I have now become a complete devotee. I, I love the yeah. experience yeah. and it always seems to kind of make me look a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but also they're putting lots of gorgeous stuff on my face that mm -hmm. I just don't ever find the time to do. Yeah, now yeah. why is that possibly okay but maybe someone having something else, a filler or maybe some yeah. Botox or just a different kind of treatment, why is that different? And that's personal opinion and also judgment. Yes. There's so much judgment out there and obviously we see this in lots of different ways in society. Social mm -hmm. media in particular really becomes you know, minefield for people yeah. feeling like they're entitled to give you their opinion, <laughs> yes. and I think that's what a lot of yeah. women are, and some men are yeah. really resisting. It's like, how will I be perceived if yes. I do this thing? Now, the worry is, I said there were two, two types of people there: the mm -hmm. people who worry that they don't deserve this, yeah. that they're not worthy of, of looking after themselves, and then there are the other people who perhaps do still worry that there is a bit of a stigma. But what is that really a stigma about? Because again, you're looking after yourself. We, we don't have a stigma of someone saying, I'm going to the gym twice a week, and totally, I, or I've totally, got into yes. Pilates, or kettlebells, <laughs> yeah. or whatever yes. it is. And certainly as a woman, as you yeah. know, the older you get, everyone's yeah. like, well, you've got to go to the gym and do weight yes. bearing to uh, things to prevent to combat. muscle loss. Absolutely, and, for yeah. stuff that actually physically yeah. happens with you, uh, you know, mm. once you go through the menopause. Nobody would think of that as vanity, mm. and yet, mm. Other things that we do, I, yeah. I don't know whether it's because it's just about the face, yeah. that somehow we're meant to put up with things happening to our face <laughs> and, and not make them late. gracefully is exactly. nothing graceful about but aging. I think there is this worry that it's still a source of judgment. Yes. And, and nobody wants to be on the receiving end of judgment, yeah. nobody wants to be criticised, and nobody really wants to be thought vain. Totally, and, and there's that also, I find the fear of looking silly, they fear, or not silly, looking weird, because they fear that as soon as they step near a doctor with a needle or a laser or whatever, it might make them look one of, like one of the 
overdone um, celebs that we've seen and yes. that and then what would their friends say it, it, as well as the sort of the wider community there's that now that's your world I correct yeah. me if I'm wrong but yeah, you'd yeah. have to have an awful lot of stuff done to well, end you, up you, looking... you're right but people don't see that they think yes. the second they step into a doctor's office they're gonna look like an overblown puffball or something yes. and if, if you go to the right people it is not gonna happen but then some people are also fearful of using too much face creams they, they say um, oh, I'll try that cream you gave me, but I'm not using too much because what if it had too much of an effect? And I, I don't want to burst the bubble. <laughs> you could bathe in that and it, it would, you'd be lucky. You know, the yes. studies have shown if you use it that's, that's the trouble with yeah. um, the way that we learn about the world. We learn yeah. by experience in many ways, okay. either our own direct experience or the experience mm -hmm. of others. And if you've been a teenager and you've had pimples, spots, acne, yes. that will live with you for a very long time. And I think a lot yes. of people think, I don't want to put more um, product on my face because mm -hmm. I fear going back to that era when, yes. I'm sure that that's yeah. incorrect, that, that's faulty thinking, that's, a, yeah. that's not a correct belief. But it's amazing how those life lessons become sedimented. Yeah. And as a result, it affects our behavior 20, 30, 40 years later. Totally, and I, I think there's a strong line that people think it's cheating. I, I find the cheating with ageing idea comes in when needles are involved. Somehow people think having a, a laser or an IPL treatment to remove surface pigmentation, that's quite good. Celebs will talk about this in interviews, so it, cause it, that's something that really annoys me, that, that no well-known person who has these treatments now, most of them do if they look better than they ought. Um, Will actually talk about it. They claim it's because they went vegan or they've taken out <laughs> yoga or they're doing yeah, they've got a new face cream, and it's so unhelpful to Mrs. Yes. Average. You know, we're sitting there thinking, "Wow, they look incredible," and they yeah. say it's because they went vegan. So they'll try that and they don't get the results, and because these people are simply not admitting the enormous amount of help they get. So as with most things in life, what we need is is much more honesty out there, yes. much more authenticity. What we yes. need are, are people to say that I have had a little bit of work done. This yeah. is what it was. And this is why I look fabulous. So I think you're right. There is this um, growing trend now, even though we claim to want people to be more honest and more truthful, that actually people are hiding behind ever increasing masks because, again, they don't want to admit that they haven't got there naturally, that it isn't just the genes. Yeah, I, I get bothered when I go to a lot of conferences in this area and I'm constantly doing selfies with the doctors, but some of them will prefer to take the selfies on their phone, they won't do it on mine, and when they need to, they'll say, I'll get this over to you in a minute. And I know they're gonna rush off and improve that photo, because they're not comfortable with their image. Oh, <laughs> you need goodness. guys, guys, your faces are well, I guess, I mean, that's the problem, isn't yeah. it? We are a much more visual age yes. than we ever were. Yes. You know, 150 years ago, we didn't have, well, for at least we didn't have amazing yeah. lighting, and yeah. therefore we didn't really see ourselves 24-7. We yes. could look in the mirror, but we couldn't really see ourselves. Yeah. And then with the advent of photography and the advent of psychoanalysis, you might say, we were able to see ourselves inside and out in a way that we were never able to before. Wow. And with that comes a great desire to change things. Okay. Now I speak as someone <laughs> who kind of has people <laughs> coming to me who want to change emotionally. They yes. want to change the you know the narrative of their life or they yeah. want to break some patterns and and again there used to be a bit of stigma around that sure. now we're actually championing we people it, the royal we? family yeah. celebrities yeah. Yeah. sports yeah. people yeah. they're going out there and saying i have had very recently i heard a, you know a very famous footballer was on desert island discs talks openly about his journey in therapy yeah. a similar thing i think is happening in the sort of external world as we're saying it's okay to change, but all, we don't want to know the secret. We don't want to sort of look behind the veil to see what really helped okay. people. And I, it's a shame because only more honesty is going to help more people. Yeah, I, I think um, honesty about all, any, any of these things, even. I started doing some Instagram live talking about the questions that are coming in because I, I just can't answer them all individually. Uh, which I do sitting in front of a, a whacking great light, you know, because, because oh, you look amazing. <laughs> yeah. It is that light. But a couple of weeks ago, the light fell over halfway through, and I was so busy grubbing about on my desk or something, I didn't notice. 
and then Thor looks at the camera and thought, why do I look five years older than I did five minutes ago? And he, ah, there's the light, but the light wouldn't sit back up. So my poor husband had to sit there holding the light. And I thought, come on, I ought to be able to do this without it. But yeah, but I feel I need to sort of say to people, so when I have a picture in the papers and they say, wow, that's amazing. He, do you know what went into getting that picture to look in the way the paper wanted to present me? Yes. You know, it's, it's so difficult. And, and, and yet people will still praise you for it. So, you know, no wonder this is a goal we all, we all feel interested to. in. Yeah. Yes. And I think there is a, a version of life that is out there on Instagram, it's out mm -hmm. there in television. Yeah. As you say, you yeah. and I are in that, I'm partly in that world where I get interviewed and in advance everyone kind of makes me look sure. television ready. Yeah. But I, yeah. I don't feel myself. So I yeah. took the decision today mm -hmm. to arrive with no makeup. And, you know, I don't know what that's going to look like on you camera. Look, but, but actually, I'm okay with that because I actually feel more myself and therefore I feel I can give a better version of myself. So the value of what we do, I like to feel, comes from what we're saying. Or Rather than what the, I look like. I know, and yet, and yet I, I, I struggle with that the whole time in this in, in Well, it'll be interesting to see what the comments are yeah. uh, after this because a lot of times people are worried about keeping it real and maybe there is a sense in which they too have been sucked into thinking mm -hmm. that they've got to look a certain way and that's why some of them explore some of these um, tweakments. However, wearing my therapy hat, yeah. looking after yourself and taking care of your body, of your skin, because mm -hmm. we only have one body, yeah, we only yeah. have one life, yeah. is a really important thing to do and it shows a lot of self-worth, it, self, mm -hmm. it shows a lot of self-love. And I read a fantastic book a couple of years ago, uh, which was a relationship book. Uh, so it gave lots of tips about how yeah. to you know, keep your relationship. But one of the chapters was about sex and about um, physical well-being. Mm -hmm. And the, the author wrote a really interesting thing. She said, I'm not here to tell you you've got to look a certain way, mm -hmm. but you do have a responsibility to your partner to stay healthy. Okay. And I thought, what an amazing wow. way of putting it. That's a completely new perspective. Now, if I, well, it's, okay. it's a totally different <laughs> yeah. mindset. Yeah. And I feel the same about tweakments because ultimately, you're, you know, whether it's oxygenizing your skin, mm -hmm. not the correct word, I'm sure, but whether, if you're making your skin look good because you're replenishing it with um, mm -hmm. moisture that it's lost or whatever, that has got to be a good thing. That's, yeah. a, that's a healthy thing for your yeah. skin. I, I, as you know, I am a sun worshipper and yeah. I have lots of sun damage and I have many more wrinkles than I ought to have at my age. Um, and I'm it, sure your vitamin D levels are great. Well, I, exactly. <laughs> I, I, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, of course, I'm going to put sun protection yeah, on my skin yeah. because I yeah. want to look after my skin a little yeah. bit. So, treatments for me is just a little bit further on that line of yeah. looking after yourself. Yeah. And the byproduct of that is that you might look a bit younger or fresher, but that wouldn't be why I would be doing it. Okay. There's also the issue, which I struggle with as well, slightly of how confidence plays into this, because I know that some people who message me privately saying, you know, thanks for the steel with treatments, particularly if they work in younger businesses like tech with a lot of youngsters who have taken to calling them granny or the professor or whatever you know they yeah. say they sharpen yeah. up their image they sharpen up their makeup and with treatments they they, they, they can just haul themselves back into that line and getting more mm. respect from the youngsters which is which is sad commentary on our modern age but um but it but it clearly works and i'm reluctant to talk about treatments as a a confidence boost because that sounds like in order to boost your confidence you ought to have them which is not what i'm saying but i I know there is a lot of confidence to be derived from feeling you look good, whether it's from wearing a new face cream, a new eyeshadow, yeah. new outfit, or the fact that you've had an injectable moisturiser treatment that's just softened those wrinkles that bit. So there's always going to be a fine line between sort of being doled up and mm. dismissed as an airhead and actually looking after yourself. Yeah. And whether, as you say, whether it's you know that little slick of lipstick, yeah. putting on a pair of high heels yes. before you go in to give that awesome presentation that mm. wins that pitch, those little tips and tricks mm -hmm. to make yourself feel better, that, uh, which I have in the past called the stiletto effect, because it yes. kind of makes you feel like you're owning your day, mm. and here I am. Um, and you know, the, the sales of lipstick infamously go up totally. um, at, at times of recession because totally, people yeah. want to give themselves that little yes. bit of a treat. 
Tweetments, again, are part of that, I think. It's part of the armory mm -hmm. for some men and women to be able to say, I am now going to really boss this day or yeah. boss this particular period of my life. Yeah. Um, you know, you, I wouldn't, you wouldn't hold it against someone who'd had a really bad, let's say, breakup mm -hmm. or a divorce and who then goes out and has an absolutely cracking new haircut yeah. to kind of, not necessarily of reinvent their life, but just say, I am still worth yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That actually treatments have that capacity to mm -hmm. make you feel, I'm doing a little bit for myself, making myself look the best I can be to make myself feel like I'm the best. Yeah. Um, and I don't see that there's anything wrong with that. Where I really struggle is people who judge other people for that. As yeah. if it's you know fake and it's all about vanity. Yeah. It is a fine line, but as long as you can own it and say, no, I'm doing this for me because yeah. I'm worth yeah. it, that sort of classic yeah, yeah, strike yeah. line. If you're doing it because you're worth it, it's got to be a good thing. Yeah. Lucy, thank you so much. I've talked to you all day, but I need to go for a few other things. Thank you very much.